turkey story I love. On the day after Thanksgiving of uh, 81, he came into the lab with some leftovers from his turkey. And they were experimenting with this technology, this eczema laser. And with his expertise in photochemistry and polymer science, he recognized that the laser was photo etching the plastic pulse by pulse. Because I knew proteins, because that was my PhD work. So it just came back to me, if that plastic can be drilled and so on, it should also work on tissue. And he irradiated the cartilage and made the first incision in a piece of tissue that wasn't our fingernail or our hair. I feel like all good things in medicine come from someone who has a crazy idea and they just decide to try it. And the results were, yes, this, this technology can precisely uh, remove microns of tissue on human tissue. But the idea that you could use a laser and make a neat cut like this and leave everything behind, that was incredible. I realized that we ought to have the best tools in our group and this eczema laser would be such a tool. So I got funding and I bought one and I told the people in my group, including three, look at this great new tool of ultraviolet light. Uh, think about using it. The 2013 Fritz J. and Dolores H. Russ Prize recipients are Dr. Rangaswamy Srinivasan, James J. Wynn, and the late Samuel E. Blum. We are celebrating uh, 50 years of, uh, of the first uh, uh, laser demonstrations, and this is the right time to recognized people who use lasers for uh, many different applications. It has been known for maybe about 150 years that sun gives light, visible light, but also ultraviolet light. It turns out ultraviolet light is the more powerful because it is more energetic. Lasers were already being used for retinal surgery from the dawn of lasers, and those lasers would produce therapeutic scar tissue. So lasers that they had worked with prior would do a good job, but they would surround, destroy everything in its pathway. The technique was involving removing a portion of the cornea, taking it to a very large machine that would freeze it. Then we had to defrost it and suture it back onto the patient's eye. It would take months for these patients to see and was very labor intensive and technically difficult to perform. The eczema laser is an ultraviolet laser that within seconds painlessly and precisely removes or ablates is the term, a portion of the cornea, only microns of the cornea, to change the curvature of it. What the eczema laser does is it's very precise. So in LASIK or PRK, you're able to do this corneal reshaping without causing any collateral damage and that's why it uh, has this precision, because light can be focused. There are lots of unique things you can do. You could pop balloons in midair with a laser. That doesn't matter, it's cute. But to actually reshape the surface of an eyeball, that's extraordinary. Within seconds, a patient sits up from the table after having the procedure done and says, I can't believe it, I can see the clock, I never saw that before. This technology has affected so many people and for the people who've had it done, it's quite frankly changed their lives. I have performed this procedure on many uh, patients that are in the military and really can't function without their dependence on the glasses or contact lenses. The goal of the Rust Prize is really to encourage the next generation of engineers and particularly the next generation of engineers who will bring together the disciplines of medicine, uh, biology and engineering. Bioengineering is actually the newest and the most promising field of engineering for the future. The Rust Prize is it. That's the, absolutely the top prize that I know of for, uh, for that field. I believe that the Rust Prize is it's like a holy grail to many researchers trying to put their footprint in the engineering field. Well, I think it's really important to celebrate advances in engineering uh, so that the public understands what engineering does, it improves their quality of life. There were other prizes that, to which I had tried, and then I have got these prizes, which are little prizes, not on the scale of the Russ Prize. So the Rust Prize is in a class by itself. 
there are those who have tremendous wealth as a consequence of their technical achievements, and they are smart enough to recognize the responsibility they have back to society to create that next generation. He formed his own company in 1955. He and his wife, Dolores, dug the footers for their original building, which still stands, and they effectively have adopted the Russ College of Engineering and Technology as their children. Russes, I think, were very, very gracious and kind and, and far thinking ahead to do this. Fritz taught me one thing that I will never forget, and that is to plan for decades in the future. The Russ Family Foundation really brings all this together where the life commitment to the engineering to creating for good can uh, bring joy as well as benefit to people who care for others. An innovator goes beyond just the obvious and looks for where this would actually move the needle. We have a way of describing things like this. We describe them as innovations that matter. One of the characteristics of recipients of the Russ Prize is that the invention that, that they're responsible for actually is still in widespread use. And uh, that, that really means that people are creating things for the future. And the fact that it has to have high impact on a large number of people means that effectively it's creating for the world. And so here at the Russ College, we call that create for good. Well, I think that they epitomize the concept of creating for good because of their technology now that was devised within a laboratory and now is out for the whole community uh, to be able to benefit from, to change their lives dramatically. We have created for good by uh, inventing something that made it possible to improve human sight, to give people superhuman vision, to unleash the full potential of the retina. This Turkey experiment was in 1981, and you're now talking 30 years later of mil millions of people being affected. There's no way that could have been planned. So I can only say that uh, it, is a, it is a godsend, shall we say. That's the way I would look at it. It's wonderful to see that the people who have affected so many people are honored for their work and we recognize and we're thankful for what they've done.